Objective accomplished. Briefing commences. Analysis of the destroyed base indicates that the armored force recently encountered was a part of the new paradigm. The new paradigm is a survivalist organization dedicated to creating a military state in the Western sector. The new paradigm has been active since the collapse and controls superior weapon technology. They have been arming the scavengers since our arrival. Caution is advised when their forces are encountered. Interrogation of scavenger prisoners has revealed that the new paradigm are searching this sector for the synaptic link technology. It is 98% certain that they have recovered it. Therefore, we must recover the technology from them. Commander, we have recovered a command turret from the new paradigm. This turret allows commanders to coordinate attacks between assigned units and to act as a delivery point for factories. Researching and using this technology has the highest priority. Commander, we are receiving this transmission. Incoming transmission. Your attacks upon us will not go unpunished. You are in contravention of the new paradigm. You will be destroyed. Message ends. Commander, we are detecting enemy attack forces at this location. Repulse the attack, then destroy their bases to secure the zone. Mission timer activated. Oh boy, our first hold the line mission. Christine, how long do we have until the attack reaches? Structure under attack. Oh. We have a lot of things to do at the start, so let's begin. Group 2 reporting. Move the mortars east to help the defense. Bring two of the half-track trucks to build defenses, and have the third start the command relay. Begin upgrading the northern factory. Structure under attack. Move our frontline troops out of the way here. Group 1 reporting. Structure under attack. Recycle the repair tanks. Structure under attack. Oh, and that upgrade to the medium cannon I promised. Going from a light to medium cannon gives a nice HP boost, as well as a significant damage increase at a minimal loss in fire rate per minute. The weight increase is noticeable, but we can make do. Construction completed. This gap here is the bottleneck we will hold the line at. A human opponent would realize that he could attack from two directions, or that artillery would be amazing, which the NP definitely have at this point, but it appears the NP are not strategic geniuses. Structure under attack. Structure under attack. Structure under attack. Our Alpha-2 defenses are doing their job, holding up the NP assault while we build a real defense north, and they're even taking down some of the lighter units. If any tower defense aficionados are thinking to yourselves, man, I could totally have stopped their attack here with just a ton of water towers, you're right, you could have. Feel free on your next campaign playthrough to drop 50 towers down here for kicks. Structure under attack. Construction completed. Construction completed. Construction completed. Construction completed. Structure under attack. The instant the relay is finished, we can start the minute and a half command turret research completed. and give the truck orders to upgrade factory number two to medium size. Structure under attack. Make sure to get a sensor up so our mortars can take part. Group two reporting. Structure under attack. Construction completed. Construction completed. Structure under attack.
Structure under attack. Construction completed. Construction completed. Group two reporting. Assigned to sensor. Construction completed. Structure under attack. Structure under attack. I'll let the half trackers finish that tower while I get up a repair bay. Major research completed. Structure under attack. Immediately design a half track Cobra command when able and recycle your highest experience unit to convert it into our new commander. Construction completed. Structure under attack. Production completed. And once the commander is out, begin updating all our light tanks with medium variants. I'll begin with the heavy MGs. Completed. Structure under attack. Construction completed. Structure under attack. You'll notice on the order menu for the command tank these numbers on the bottom. These are factory delivery points. As Christine mentioned in the intro, you can directly attach a factory to a commander so that all units built at it will attach and therefore go directly to him instead of a ground location. Let's do that before building the heavy MGs so that they will all join him immediately as they roll off the line. Also, any orders given to a commander will automatically filter down to his attached units. It doesn't matter what a factory's default orders are, an attached unit will always swap his orders to that of the commanders. Structure under attack. Retreat at medium damage is the choice here, and for most of the rest of the game. Structure under attack. Structure under attack. Projection completed. Assigned to commander. Structure under attack. Production completed. Assigned to commander. Production completed. Unit under attack. Production completed. Assigned to commander. Structure under attack. Structure under attack. With the initial push defeated and our new heavier units ready, we can begin a counter push. Reporting. Production completed. Assigned to commander. Production completed. Production completed. I call any force led by a command tank a main battle group, or MBG for short, so let's move our MBG down to the Southern Valley. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Group one reporting. Group two reporting. Group one reporting. Construction completed. Assigned to sensor. Group one reporting. Construction completed. Group 
You may have noticed last stage that the NP command tank was firing little blue puffs of smoke, and here's ours doing the same thing. This isn't so much a weapon as it is a laser target designator. It does technically do some scratch damage, but more importantly, it gives orders to all of the attached units as to what to fire at. If you want a single target focused, this will do it. If the MBG is just running around without a designated target, the tanks will instead fire at whatever they feel like, just like they used to. Want reporting? Unit under attack. Construction completed. Group 2, reporting. Let's bring the half-track trucks down south as our following force to build structures behind our pushing army. Construction completed. Unit under attack. Group one reporting. Group one reporting. I just gave a move order to the MBG, and you'll notice only the commander is heading for it. This is an oddity of the command groups that you should be aware of. Because the MG tanks are both within the commander's range now, which is about the size of his laser designator's weapon, and because they will be staying within that range as the commander moves. When attached to a commander, units aren't interested in moving exactly to where you tell them, they are just interested in making sure they stay within range of the commander. If you absolutely want to force them to move, you will need to give them a location that is roughly a little more than half a screen away from where they are sitting, which will cause both them and the commander to begin moving there. Just think of it as push and retreat tactics while not necessarily in combat. Unit under attack. Group one reporting. Structure under attack. Group one reporting. Construction completed. Construction completed. Unit under attack. Construction completed. Unit under attack. Group one reporting. Structure under attack. Group one reporting. Unit under attack. Construction completed. Construction completed. Group two reporting. Construction completed. Group one reporting. This is the command window from the bottom left menu. It shows all of your commanders, as well as which factories are currently attached to each one, and each commander's maximum number of units it can have attached to it. A commander's maximum battle group size is based on his experience level. He starts with six and can have two more for each level. Every time a unit under a commander gets a kill, both that unit and the attached commander get an experience point. Commanders level up at half the speed of normal units, but due to this leaked experience mechanic, they will often be your highest level units. A commander's level also affects his subordinate units. If a commander is higher level than an attached tank, 
the tank's level is assumed to be the commander's level. If the tank is a higher level than his commander, the tank is considered to be at its current level plus one. A tank's level affects its accuracy, speed, and damage mitigation, so having a high level commander giving his bonus to all of his group tends to be quite valuable. Technically, if you wanted to min-max the heck out of the system, the way to do it is to recycle any commander that reaches special rank, indicated by two vertical white bars, similar to a US Army Captain's insignia, and rebuild it as a combat tank, as that combat tank would have enough experience to be the highest possible rank of hero, and then attach that tank back under any commander, giving it bonus of hero plus one. I won't be doing that, as it is highly unnecessary to the success of this game, and I prefer my min-maxing more in RPGs than RTSs anyway. Wizardry 8 crew represent. With a brief lull in the action, let's set up all of our cannons to rebuild as their medium design. Technically, our command tank can only support seven additional subordinates right now, and there are nine cannons we want to rebuild. In the event that a factory is trying to build a unit that cannot fit under its attached commander, the factory will hold the extra tanks until a spot frees up. As our commander is close to leveling his way to a 16 tank squad anyway, we'll go ahead and queue up all nine tanks, just letting the last two pop up when space is available. While waiting for the rest of our combat team to finish, we'll continue to expand the defenses by the Southern Pass, as well as put our current MVG under the Repair Bay. The Repair Bay is an active targeting structure. If you give a unit a direct command to go heal at it, the Repair Bay will heal the unit, and then the unit will move to the Repair Bay's deposit point. However, if you just park damaged units directly under it, the Repair Bay will repair them as well, they just won't move away after they finish. I know it looks tempting to use a break in the action to push through this valley and gain some ground, but the NP have the other side of it defended. We are going to want a full force before pushing, as the staying power of our units will be necessary to avoid us getting chased down while retreating to repair. Construction completed. Production completed. Assigned to Commander. Production completed. Production completed. Production completed. Assigned to Commander. Construction completed. Unit under attack. Group one reporting. Construction completed. Structure under attack. Unit under attack. Structure under attack. Construction completed. With a good chunk of medium cannons having joined us, and a small push just destroyed, it's time to probe the NP. The first thing we'll run into is a few bunkers, but also we will come under mortar fire while pushing in. The valley is four tiles wide, which is good for us, as it will allow our damaged tanks a path to run back to the repair bay while fresh tanks take their place. But it is just narrow enough that you will sometimes bottleneck yourself. This is why pushing and retreating is so important. It keeps the tanks that aren't trying to auto-retreat moving, as opposed to being an armored logjam. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Construction completed. Unit under attack. 
Unit under attack. Construction completed. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Construction completed. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Construction completed. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Construction completed. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Construction completed. Scavenger base detected. Scavenger base detected. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. It's tempting to continue to push until you run out of units before retreating, but sometimes discretion is the better part of not losing people. The NP have decided that now is a good time to try and flank us while we try to deal with the mortars, so taking this opportunity to run back and drag them into the narrow valley instead is ideal. Giving small pushing orders while falling back is still useful though, so as to keep the healthier tanks in position to cover the hurt ones. Unit under attack. Construction completed. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Construction completed. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Construction completed. Unit under attack. Production. It's nice to have a high-powered repair facility so close to the fight, isn't it? Despite the beating we were taking while falling back, suddenly we have another wave of fresh tanks ready to fill the gap. Completed. Production completed. Assigned to command. Unit under attack. 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 While we could press our advantage right now, the fact is that NP will now have to build a fresh force to come at us again, while all we need is a bit of repair time to bring ourselves back to full strength. Take five, soldiers. Structure under attack. Structure under attack. Group one reporting. Structure under attack. Group one reporting. Structure under attack. Under attack. Group one reporting. Unit under attack. Group three reporting. 
Unit under attack. Scavenger outpost eradicated. Power resource. Group one reporting. Unit. There is a scavenger base right here with lots of defenses, which would have been a problem if we hadn't gotten the medium body designs ready. There's also a small NP outpost up here, though getting to it from this direction would involve a lot of twists, turns, and narrow passages. Speaking of narrow passages, as we have now secured the other end of the valley, let's bring up the half-track trucks to build a new repair facility. Creeping not only defenses, but the repair bay up behind our MBG serves several purposes. First, it means we won't have to run through a narrow valley to get to it. Second, the closer it is, the faster turnaround time we have to reinforcing. But third, and perhaps most importantly, is that when a tank retreats due to damage, it will always go to the closest facility, and it will always take what it feels is the most direct route to get to it. The best way to prevent your tanks from taking retreat paths that end up leading through enemy forces is to always make sure that the shortest route is to a point that you keep moving forward into locations of your choosing. Under attack. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Construction completed. Group two reporting. Structure under attack. Group one reporting. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Construction completed. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Construction completed. Unit under attack. Artifact detected. Unit under attack. Construction completed. Group 1 reporting. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Artifact recovered. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Structure under attack. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Group two reporting. Group one reporting. Group one reporting. Power resource. Unit under attack. Group two reporting. Group one reporting. Unit under attack. Major research completed.
Group one reporting. Group three reporting. Group two reporting. Group one reporting. Group three reporting. Group one reporting. Unit under attack. Construction completed. Group two reporting. Group one reporting. Construction completed. Unit under attack. Group two reporting. Unit under attack. Assigned to sensor. Group one reporting. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Major research completed. Unit under attack. Group one reporting. Construction completed. Group one reporting. Group one reporting. Group three reporting. Group one reporting. Unit under attack. Scavenger outpost eradicated. Enemy A detected. Unit under attack. Group one reporting. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Major research completed. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Group one reporting. Structure under attack. Construction completed. While you can push through this tiny passage here to get to the NP factory, any tank that gets damaged while doing so stands a good chance of trying to run this way, which would be bad. We'll just let them have their factory for the moment while we go through the main door instead. Unit under attack. Construction completed. Construction completed. Research completed. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Group 3 reporting. Unit under attack. Construction completed. Group 1 reporting. Unit under attack. 
Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Group two reporting. Assigned to sensor. Group one reporting. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Group one reporting. Under attack. Group one reporting. Group one reporting. Unit under attack. Group two reporting. This is another one of those ways I could sweep around behind, but the defenses at the front door weren't significant enough to cause me to take the risk of being cut off from a direct route to the repair bay. Construction completed. Group one reporting. Group three reporting. Group two reporting. Construction completed. Structure under attack. Group one reporting. Major research completed. Project team updates. Commander, we are detecting enemy transports landing to the north of our position. Take your forces and secure the northern zone. Enemy transport detected. Group 3 reporting. Group 2 reporting. Group 3 reporting. Group 1 reporting. Incoming enemy transport. Reporting. Construction completed. Group one reporting. Unit under attack. Construction completed. 
Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Major research completed. Unit under attack. Research completed. Unit under attack. Major research completed. Unit under attack. Under attack. Group one reporting. Unit under attack. Group one reporting. Unit under attack. Unit. At this point, there is a bit of strategy to discuss, so I'm going to go all John Madden on the screen. The NP base on this cliff can only be accessed by a ramp from the north, so I can't simply drive in and flatten it from below. However, the base does have the first mortar pits we run into, and they will be happy to shell us any time we get close, which combined with the narrow valley and overlooking defenses of this road, as well as potentially any land units that want to get involved, especially from the NP landing zone here, could be quite deadly. Ideally, we would like to go around this way to cut off and eliminate the landing zone, but that's a problem because the NP have a sensor tower here that will continue to spot us, allowing the base's mortars to keep firing the whole time. So the plan is multi-step. First, we drive into Death Valley to eliminate the spotting sensor while the trucks set up defenses behind to cover the road. Second, we will put up a repair bay down here so that when we sweep around back, we will retreat in the desired direction. Third, we will run up the plateau and kill the defenses there, which will shut off the landing zone. And then fourth, our mortars will occupy the plateau, while our trucks set up defenses and a sensor of our own, allowing us to eliminate the base on the hill remotely, thus making Christine a happy Project AI. Under attack, construction Unit under attack. Major research completed. Major research completed. Unit under attack. Group one reporting. Group three reporting. Group one reporting. Unit under attack. Group three reporting. Group one reporting. Unit under attack. Group three reporting. Unit under attack. Group one reporting. Group two reporting. Major research completed. Construction completed. Group one reporting. Unit under attack. Structure under attack. 
Construction completed. Construction completed. Group two reporting. Assigned to sensor. Group three reporting. Group one reporting. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Enemy transport detected. Construction completed. Unit under attack. Enemy base detected. Incoming enemy transport. Much like our own flying football, enemy transports are limited to 10 units per drop. So from now until the end of the game, when you hear one coming in, know that a 10-pack is the biggest force that you'll have to face from one. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. I actually bottlenecked myself there. My command tank valiantly took some hits for the cannon, but in the end I have to give a specific order to get the cannon away. If you ever need to select a single tank under a commander and give it an order, use Control left click. Once individually selected, giving an order to the tank will detach it from the command group. Once it's safely behind the line, I reattach it, but due to a quirk of the game, it does not immediately take the commander's orders. To get it to go home, I have to open up the command group menu and select retreat at medium again, which finally makes the tank get the idea. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Group one reporting. Construction completed. Power resource. Unit under attack. Group one reporting. Group two reporting. Construction completed. Research completed. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Report. 
Reporting. Structure under attack. Structure under attack. Group one, reporting. Construction completed. Group two, reporting. Group three, reporting. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Group one, reporting. Group one, reporting. Construction completed. Group two, reporting. Assigned to sensor. Group three, reporting. Structure under attack. Group one, reporting. Structure under attack. Group three reporting. Group one reporting. Unit under attack. Group one reporting. Unit under attack. Group three reporting. Group two reporting. Group three reporting. With a brief pause in the fighting, now is a good time to get a new unit type into the action. You may have seen a couple of these go up on my towers, but now we are going to design one on a full tracked chassis, the Lancer Anti-Tank Rocket. This, and its future upgrades, will be the premier way of taking down heavy armor targets for the rest of the game. A quick look at its damage and rate of fire make it apparent that this thing will hurt. Even against targets that get bad damage modifiers, like hard structures and infantry, end up taking significant damage just due to the sheer raw value. Its major downside is that, other than artillery, anti-tank weapons have the lowest hit points of any tier of weaponry, so while it might be tempting to make a whole force out of nothing but these killers, you will probably want to keep a mix of units in your MBG to handle the inevitable pitched battle with the survivors of the initial burst. Also, the rockets fire in two rocket bursts, so while the raw stats look like it should be firing a 200 odd damage shot every 6 seconds, what you will actually be getting is a 500-ish damage burst every 12 seconds, future tech upgrades notwithstanding. Group 1 reporting. Construction completed. Group 2 reporting. Assigned to sensor. Artifact detected. Group one reporting. Reporting. Group two reporting. Assigned to sensor. Group 
One reporting. Construction completed. I'm going to take four of our cannons and two of our MGs and recycle them so as to rebuild them into the new Lancer model. The mortars will continue to shell the cliffside while we wait for them to build and drive here. Group one reporting. Construction completed. Production completed. Assigned to Commander. Production completed. Production completed. Research completed. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Production completed. Assigned to commander. Unit under attack. Production completed. Construction completed. Production completed. Construction completed. Unit under attack. Well, that explains why we've only been fighting small trickles of opponents for the last few minutes. Group one reporting. Group one reporting. Group three reporting. Research completed. Construction completed. Construction completed. Group two reporting. Construction completed. Structure under attack. Group two reporting. Group one reporting. Unit under attack. Group two reporting. Assigned to sensor. Unit under attack. Group one reporting. Construction completed. Construction completed. Group two reporting. Assigned to sensor. Group one reporting. Two, 
Reporting. Group one, reporting. Construction completed. Group two, reporting. Assigned to sensor. Under attack. Unit under attack. Structure under attack. Unit under attack. Major research completed. Group one reporting. Structure under attack. Group two reporting. Group one reporting. Group two reporting. Assigned to system. Unit under attack. Group one reporting. Group two reporting. Group one reporting. Unit under attack. Artifact recovered. A erected. Unit under attack. Just a quick save here so that I don't have to redo most of this stage if I screw up somehow. Unit under attack. Scavenger outpost eradicated. Group three reporting. Group one reporting. Major research completed. Group 3 reporting. Just north of here is a small scavenger base. It contains no techs and has no oil, but may as well eliminate it anyway. Group 1 reporting. It does have a factory, and having enemies drive up behind you is rarely a good thing. Scavenger base detected. Unit under attack. Construction completed. 
Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Construction completed. Group one reporting. Unit under attack. Scavenger outpost eradicated. Group one reporting. Construction completed. We are approaching the final base, and therefore will want to, as usual, leave an enemy base structure up. To prevent accidental demolition, I won't get the mortars any closer than they already are. Group 1 reporting. Structure under attack. Construction completed. Unit under attack. Group 1 reporting. Construction completed. Group 1 reporting. Project team updates. Commander, the structure we seek is located somewhere on this plateau to the west. Destroy the fortress guarding the plateau, then search for the pre-collapsed structure. This structure is your primary objective. Enemy transport detected. Construction completed. Unit under attack. We will be doing a lot of fighting in this small area, so this small passage here is going to be of great concern to us. It can be used to squeeze the enemy forces, including the ones being transported in, but if we get lax, it can also be used to choke point our cells. So don't go down into it unless you know there aren't any mobile units around. Unit under attack. Group 1 reporting. Unit under attack. Incoming enemy transport. Unit under attack. 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 I reselect retreat at medium damage here because I noticed this tank here is sitting at yellow health, but not running. This time it wasn't a failure of retreat orders, but rather just a display issue. Retreat at medium damage makes a tank run for repairs when it falls below 75% health, but the health bar turns to yellow right at 75% health. Just something to remember before running to the forums and complaining that the retreat orders aren't working great. Unit under attack. 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 Group one reporting.
unit under attack. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. This is the designated survivor of the stage. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Scavenger base detected. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Scavenger outpost ready. Artifact detected. Unit under attack. This is a good example of why never getting choke pointed is a good idea. I gave the tanks the command to move up, and they started doing so. But then I gave the order to target the tower, and the tanks in front turned around because they had left the command range of the command tank. Until the commander manages to get through the narrow enclosed pass, the MBG won't be of much effect here. And with a transport incoming, that could be very bad. Unit under attack. Enemy transport detected. I actually give the order to pull back here, not because I don't think I could handle the fight, but because I don't want a clogged mess holding up anyone trying to retreat for repairs. Incoming enemy transport. Group 3 reporting. Unit under attack. Major research completed. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Construction completed. Unit under attack. Group 3 reporting. Group 1 reporting. Unit under attack. Group 1 reporting. Under attack. Construction completed. Unit under attack.
Unit under attack. Unit under attack. And the mission is complete. A quick save so as not to lose anything, and then let's get to the techs. Computer research completed. The command turret. Not much left to say about it by this point, other than when it says body points high, it really needs it, as it has the highest hit points of any turret in the game which, considering your turret and body add together to form your base HP, and then your choice of propulsion acts as a multiplier to it, means that this guy's hit points can go on nearly forever. If you have the micro skills for it, you could even consider letting him intentionally take damage instead of your units if you need a damage sponge. Just be aware that if he ever drops below the threshold of his own retreat orders, he will automatically remove himself from any hotkeyed command group you had set up, mine is control group 1, and not only him, but his entire force will all try to run to the nearest repair bay all at once, which is rarely recommended. Weapon research completed. Weapon research completed. Weapon research completed. Structure research completed. The Minipod, its upgrades, and its defensive tower. If we had gotten this last stage, it might have been useful, but as it is, its only real point was to research through it to get to the Lancer. Vehicle research completed. Tracked propulsion. The slowest of all vehicle propulsion forms, this makes up for it by giving massive hit point boosts as well as good damage mitigation against anything that isn't a type all-rounder or anti-tank. And even in the cases of those two weapons, tracks are still the most survivable option. The slow part of this equation is going to be an issue for a while, especially after we get a heavy body, but as the game progresses, we will get additional techs and bodies that will mitigate that quite a bit. By the end of the game, a tracked heavy body will be only marginally slower than a light-bodied wheeled vehicle was at the start. Structure research completed. The research module added to our research facilities to speed them up. Vehicle research completed. Fuel injection engine giving a small speed boost to all vehicles. Weapon research completed. Weapon research completed. Structure research completed. Structure research completed. The Lancer itself, as well as its upgrade and defensive structure options, not much more can be said that hasn't already been shown. Weapon research completed. And lastly, the Bunker Buster. Between last stage and this one, you may have noticed that bunkers take a long time to kill, even if they aren't threatening to us. Bringing in a flamer just to deal with them might even have seemed like a good plan, despite the flamer's downsides. But I mentioned back in Alpha 1 that we'd have a more survivable option available to us once we got to that point. This is that weapon. This weapon does absolutely pitiful damage to all units, and absolutely massive damage to all structures. Just a couple of these can usually remove any building you want gone in one volley. 
However, the downsides of a huge firing time and uselessness versus anything that isn't stationary means that they are a highly specific weapon, with a usefulness that I will leave up to the viewer. I probably won't be using them in this playthrough myself, but if you want to add them to your MBG, or even have them as a small secondary battle group that comes in to remove fortifications, they aren't a bad choice. The main reason I don't do that myself has to do with, well, you'll see in about six stages from now. At this point, I'm going to have my units explore the map to fully reveal its still hidden portions, as well as take care of the unit redesigns and base preparations. Back in a bit. Welcome back. First, the stage layout. At the northeast, I have effectively completely blocked the road leading out to the north. Insert the quote of Captain Ricard describing exactly where the line needs to be drawn, here. I've also left a Cobra tracked truck here set to retreat at heavy damage just behind the wall. This is the second reason I like having two truck designs. One, which is light and fast, which I take on away missions with me, so that I know I'm pulling into the football the trucks that don't have a job back home at my base. And the heavier trucks, while staying where they are, also happen to be on repair duty for major defensive locations. Their extra survivability is good so that, if they get shot at while I'm not watching, they can retreat back to a nearby repair facility. Nothing is getting through this area without a great deal of pain. Yes, the way I set it up means that I can't get to the bunkers to repair them, but personally, I find that superior to leaving a starting gap that they can either get by or shoot my truck through. As like last time, I left the various structures I built while creeping through the map up. They won't stop a heavy tank by themselves, but they can act as delay and information, and I don't really need the extra funding that recycling them would provide. On the center plateau, I've put up a repair bay, power plant, and factory. This is because next stage wants me to build a base on the plateau. I have no idea what qualifies as a base, but this should cover it. Building the base isn't the next stage's primary objective anyway, so I just get it out of the way. The three entrances to the plateau each have a Lancer MG combination at them. I've scattered a few sensor towers across the top of the cliff, overlooking the rest of the map. And the South Central Oil Derrick. And this, my major defensive stopping point. 18 mortars with a series of hard points in front of them and bunkers in front of that. To fire a direct fire weapon in this game, you need to have a direct line of sight to the target. Hard points are higher up than bunkers, so you can increase the number of things firing by putting the tall towers behind the short bunkers. This also gives an advantage in that bunkers have a better damage resistance against more weapons than towers do. Only flame weapons really kill the bunkers faster than they would a tower, and with this much firepower, hopefully flame weapons won't get into firing range. In the two little divots between hard point segments, I've parked two of the heavy trucks for repairing purposes. My main base defense is a bit more sparse than the two major lines I've built. Assigned to sensor. But that's because there will usually be at least part of my MBG present at the main base when a stage starts. The defenses you see here, along with the mortar squad as supporting fire, will, if not enough to actually stop a push, at least be enough to hold it up while I steer my tanks into position. My wheel trucks are sitting here, behind the defenses, ready to be rapidly deployed elsewhere if need be. The ever lonely oil derrick, the north factory with a few defenses of its own, and the main base. I've updated the command tank, cannon, and heavy MG designs to use full tracks and have rebuilt them accordingly. I haven't changed the mortars, that will come a couple stages and techs later. I have 10 units sitting on the landing zone, 3 MGs, 4 Lancers, and 2 Cannons, all of the highest experience I had for those types, and 1 Heavy Truck. I know I said I prefer fast trucks for away missions, but the next one will be an exception. 
The next mission is not an away mission, but I want these sitting here for when the next away mission does start. And over here, the commander and the remainder of the MBG. For the next stage, this will be my response group. I'll explain that a little more next video. With the wrap-up finished, I'll take my half-track trucks to build an MG tower to shoot down the sensor, after which I'll recycle the half-track trucks as I no longer have need of them. And so we'll head straight to Alpha 7. And this sensor takes a lot of shots. Enemy objective accomplished. 